I'm Tommy D. He's Moak Hamilton. This is Rapid Fire Knicks. Let's start with the Nick who played in the Olympics yesterday, had an all-time Olymp Olympic performance. Give me your thoughts on Carmelo. Well, I think if you're a Nick fan, Carmelo Anthony's performance in the Olympics yesterday was great. Um, I think you should be very excited about the fact that he's in shape and that he's also playing within the offensive system, not really forcing the action too much. I'm not sure if uh, the fans are really giving it enough, Nick fans anyway, on Twitter, from, from what I've noticed. Really not enough, I think, uh, talk ab about it. Do you think it's an, it's an underrated, like the performance is underrated, or do you think people aren't just ready for basketball, they just want to see him play for the Knicks in, in November? Well, the thing about it is that, obviously, international competition, the international players, they're not nearly as good as the NBA competition. Carmelo is playing with LeBron James and with Kobe Bryant. Those are the people he's going to be competing against once the NBA season kicks off. So though he had a great performance yesterday, though he made 10 three-pointers, and though he shot amazing well you got to wait to see if he can do that in the NBA now Carmelo's playing uh, a lot of four internationally what are your thoughts on how he's playing the four and do you think that that's something that we'll see more in the regular season it's a great question is he a power forward by definition is he a big strong forward absolutely Un unfortunately Amari Stoudemire is there I think if you had no Amari Stoudemire and it was Tyson Chandler and Carmelo clearly he would be the f he'd be playing the four position which is ironic because he wasn't a fan necessarily of Mike D'Antoni's system but look what he's doing now I think he was more not of a fan of Mike D'Antoni's defensive system as we get back to the Olympics though a lot of controversy out there about the 23 and under rule what are your thoughts on that well the 23 and under rule is something that uh, FIBA really what they're trying to do you, you kind of have to know a little bit about about FIFA and the World Cup basically the World soccer. Cup right soccer the, the World Cup without question is the world's most uh, watched and exciting international soccer tournament the Olympics is a distant second and the reason why is because in the Olympics with soccer 23 and under is the rule everyone looks forward to the World Cup because that's where the best players are going to be playing if the NBA and if FIBA were to make the same exact rule for the Olympics Kyrie Irving Anthony Davis, Blake Griffin, Kevin Durant, none of those guys would be eligible for the 2016 games that are going to be in Brazil. You'd have to wait until 2018 for the World Cup of Basketball to actually see them play. So that's what it's really all about. And think about that, you know, moving forward, no LeBron, maybe Carmelo plays one more, maybe LeBron plays one more. But, you know, t to me, what's that next level? You mentioned Kyrie, you mentioned Blake Griffin guys who, if it were 23 under, wouldn't be playing anyway. How about the next level, though? I mean, it's really going to be interesting to see who's on the horizon, who are those players that are going to be able to, uh, to, to compete for Team USA. Is the future of Team USA basketball in good shape in your mind? Well, I think if they're going to go with a 23 and under, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't think that America will have a monopoly on the gold medal the way they have in the Olympic Games. Uh, the fact of the matter is that we, we've seen, especially in 2004, we know that the world is getting better at basketball. Right now you have teams like Brazil, Argentina, Spain, even Lithuania. They're very good teams. There are teams that have been together for a long time. These are professional players. And if we're sending 22 and 21 year old guys that are fresh out of college, I don't think that we'll be able to dominate the game we have been able to in the recent past. Great question and a uh, uh, debate that I had on Twitter. Better starting five right now, Knicks or Nets? Put, put Ronnie Brewer at the two. I would have to say from a talent perspective, I would probably go with the Knicks. But the thing that we know about basketball is that it's not really all about talent. A lot of it is about chemistry. What I'll say about Darren Williams is that he's a much better floor general than Raymond Felton is. And I think that all together, the pieces that the Nets have kind of fit better than what the Knicks have. So if the Knicks can get it together, get their chemistry together, if Amari Stoudemire and Carmelo can finally sort of click and get it together, then I would say the Knicks. So there you go. Well, I'm with you on that. I mean, I think the Knicks front court is better than the Nets back court. Uh, let's put it this way. The Knicks front court is better than the Nets back court is against the Knicks, if that makes any sense. <laughs> I think Joe Johnson's going to have a huge year. I think, I think people are giving Joe Johnson too much grief because of his contract. I think he's a player who's going to come in and really surprise a lot of Brooklyn fans and, uh, and have a great year. Let's talk about Ronnie Brewer, the, the latest addition, and Chris Smith, two guys uh, who they brought in, uh, signed via free agency. They may not be done. They may bring a couple people in here uh, over the next couple days to, to compete for the spot. Give me your thoughts on Chris Smith and, uh, and Ronnie Brewer, the, the latest additions to the Knicks. Well, until Iman Shumpert comes back, and we're not exactly sure when that's going to be right now. People are saying January for the most part. But if you function under the assumption that you're going to be down a backcourt player for the balance of the season, 
at least until the All-Star break, then you can't really argue with bringing those guys in. Brewer, uh, you know, he might not be much of an offensive player, but defensively he's very versatile, he's very good. He can play both the shooting guard and the small forward positions, and he's ultimately going to make them a much stronger defensive team. When you consider that they've added Kurt Thomas and Marcus Camby, they might have trouble scoring the ball, but they might not need to. As far as Chris, Chris Smith is concerned, um, it, it's really a no-brainer. He's on a non-guaranteed deal, and you might catch lightning in a bottle. We didn't know who Jeremy Lin was. We didn't know who Steve Novak was. We didn't know who Sean Williams was when they were brought in. So you never know what a guy might be able to do. It's great to be able to talk about actual basketball, not lockout, like this time last year, right? That's for sure. Great job, as always. Thanks a lot. I'm Tommy D. That's Rapid Fire. We'll be back with more next week. Hope you guys are enjoying it.